We're joined today at Simplifying by Colleen Rainbolt, and she's from Boeing, and she's going to tell us all about the 787 that's very soon about to take its first flight. And Colleen, tell us a little about yourself and your role. My role at Boeing is in a group called Passenger Satisfaction and Revenue. It's in marketing. I have a background in aeronautical engineering, and today what my job is is to try to balance what makes passengers happy with what earns our airline customers the most amount of revenue. And you'll find some of those features as we go through the 787 today. Nice. So why don't we go inside the 787 right now and see what really differentiates the 787? Yeah. So Colleen, tell us about what really differentiates the 787 um, customer's brand experience. All right, so that's a good question. So there's actually two ways that we are um, working on branding with the 787. The first one is things that we believe in that will help improve the passenger experience. These are features that you'll find standard on every 787 uh, that operates with every airline that purchases 787s. And just to give you a highlight of some of those features, one is large stow bins, mm -hmm. a second one is big windows on the airplane, having a window that doesn't have a plastic window shade so we give a passenger the view to outside throughout the whole flight. Some of the other features that you'll see are things like the latches on the stow bins that are intuitive and easy for passengers to understand, mm -hmm. lavatory doors that are easy to open as well, and uh, quite a few other features. You'll also be able to see behind me the colored lighting. That's right. a feature available on all the 787s. We like the blue overhead because it gives you the feeling of their being a sky overhead. Right, right. Now there are also ways that we are allowing um through the use of, of standard features, but allowing airlines the ability to customize the airplane interior for their brand. One of those elements, again, is the lighting. The lighting on the 787 is full color spectrum LEDs, mm -hmm. so airlines have the ability to make the lighting be any color that they'd like it to be, both on the ceiling of the airplane as well as along the sidewalls of the airplane. Mm -hmm. They can control the speed at which the lights turn on and off, as well as the colors of the lighting to cycle through colors of a sunrise or sunset or bring in some of their brand into the cabin. Another feature that you see that is a differentiator for airlines from a branding perspective is this magnificent entryway of the 787. Right, right, we saw that. It's... What we're doing here is creating a transition space for our airline customers as their passengers walk down the jetway to compress them in the jetway and then release them into this big, beautiful uh, entryway of the 787, which provides an architectural welcome to the airplane. This is a feature that is selectable by our airline customers, uh, so it will be on some of the 787s, but not on all of them so it's a way for airlines to distinguish. Now a uh, third and, and last but definitely not least is the seating configuration in the airplane. Mm -hmm. So within the 787 we offer four abreast, five abreast, six abreast, seven abreast, <laughs> eight abreast, and nine abreast. So the airline has the ability to lay out the seating configuration in the cabin according to who they are going to be flying around, uh, how they want to set their fares, what they want to do inside the cabin to differentiate. There are a lot of different seat suppliers and so there's the ability to differentiate there as well with colors and fabrics and features that are on the seats. Right. Now you mentioned earlier to me, the focus on premium economy and you know the lack of first class. And it, why is that special for the 787? Well, we really see premium economy as being the way forward. As business class fares continue to, to grow and first class starts to, to go away in a lot of markets, what we're seeing is a big fare differential between economy class and business class, which is making room for a new product in between. We call that product premium economy. On the 787, there are a lot of options the airlines would have as to what they'd like their premium economy to mm -hmm. look like. Um, could be a nine abreast product with more pitch than economy class could be an eight abreast product right. either in two four two configuration or also in three two three configuration right. depending on what makes the most sense for that airline so it's really up to them we also could do a seven abreast premium economy or regional business so really allows the flexibility to the airline right that that's fantastic now there's so many great passenger experiences inside the plane is there a backstory on how Boeing got the insights to you know, to make the spacious gangway, to the entry and latches and things like that. Oh, definitely. We've done a great deal of work. Um 
from a psychological perspective to really understand what our passengers' needs are and then to be able to put those things into the cabin of the airplane. There are really two major elements that we've been focusing on. The first one is we learn through a great deal of research and, and we know because we're humans that for as far back as anyone can remember, people have been fascinated by the idea of flying. What we wanted to do inside the cabin of our 787 and, and all of our products really is to reconnect the passenger to that flying experience. Mm -hmm. So many of the features that you see here inside the cabin, like the blue sky lighting overhead, the really big windows without a window shade, those features are there to remind the passenger that they're taking part in this experience that they would describe as being magical, something that they're fascinated by. Mm. The other thing that we're doing is we've learned through all this research and, and understanding from a psychological perspective that we really want to welcome people to the airplane because when you welcome people to a new space it creates a psychological break between one event and the next event that's going to follow. When people get to the boarding door of the airplane we use this dramatic entryway and the compression of the jetway and the and the height of the of the cabin in the mm -hmm. entryway to give an architectural welcome to the airplane to help passengers be ready to focus on the flying experience and be able to forget about how however long their journey has been up to the point when they get to the boarding door of the airplane. Right, that that's very interesting. Now, you also mentioned about the window shades. There, there are no window shades in 787. How does that work? That's right. So there are no plastic window shades in the 787. What we've done with the windows instead is used a technology that incorporates an electrochromic film hmm. between the panes of glass on the window. When the passenger presses the buttons underneath the window, what happens is they actually control the amount of light that comes through the window. It's essentially like applying a tint to the window. Mm -hmm. So you can close the window, but still be able to see outside and see some of these uh, glorious things around the world like glaciers over Greenland or the right. Himalayas um, without bothering your neighbor who's trying to sleep or, or watch a video. That, that's fantastic, and I think it's very convenient for air crew as well who are trying to close the window shades and trying to bring them up during takeoff and landing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the crew would have ultimate control over the windows while still allowing passengers to have control uh, as well. So yes, they can press the button and control all the windows at once if they if they so choose. Right, that, that's fantastic. Looking again into the future, Airbus is developing a great plane, A350. Now, how do you see that competition panning out and the differentiation holding up? Yeah, so uh, the A350 is going to be a great airplane. It's still in development right now, so we'll wait and see uh, how it turns out as a final design. There are a lot of things that are on the A350 that we're seeing as things that Airbus has, has learned from us through our development of the 787. Uh, it's one of the benefits of being a second mover. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that we've learned about the 787 as well. Now, um, going forward, the A350 uh, will come a few years after the 787. It will have things that are similar to the 787, it will have things that are different from the 787. We really believe that we've done a lot of psychological research that has driven us to the design of the interiors of our airplane cabins. Mm -hmm. This focusing on, on the flying experience and reconnecting passengers to the flying experience, as well as creating this welcoming effect as passengers come in to psychologically separate them from their, their previous experiences. Those are things that we've done a great deal of research in that we believe will be different on the 787 than any airplane that our competitors will be able to come out with. Right. And so uh, when the 787 flies, we will we will see what the world thinks of the features. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Colleen, for joining us. And I look forward to flying the 787 very soon. Thank you very much.